All right, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go. We're gonna search for virtual box. And you're gonna click on the Oracle VM. It'll straight. It'll take you straight into the download. You download the box and whatever system you have. Um, you will click on Windows Host, and it automatically download for you. So after you do that. You're going to Google Ubuntu. You're going to go. You're going to go. Click on Ubuntu. You're going to go to download. Once you're in the website, you're going to download 20.0.4. Once you do that, it will automatically start. If it doesn't start, you click on download now. Okay, so once you have those down, obviously you go into your downloads folder, just double click on VirtualBox. We are going to repair, in my case, I'm going to repair it because since I've already downloaded it, but yours should have down or install. I just use custom just to do the, um, just, um, install it with custom with with uh with with the recommended great so we're gonna have to restart but it should look like this So we're gonna have to restart. Okay, so once you install, or once you, I'm sorry, once you re, once you reboot or restart the computer, you go into your folder or you go into VirtualBox. You can open it. I recommend setting a pin to start or put it onto your desktop. So you have a a program just like this. As you can remember, we installed I mean, I'm sorry, we we downloaded we downloaded Ubuntu as you can tell here. Um, that's the ISO that we're going to use to install. So we're going to create a new operating system and we're going to call it Ubuntu or whatever you want to call it. Make sure you, uh, if you, if, it, if you're fine of saving it to the default place, you can. I don't I like to give it a little bit more or a specific place so I create I already created somewhere where I have a lot of space or a lot of hard drive or gigabytes on my hard drive and it's gonna be in Linux it's gonna be Ubuntu just press next we're gonna allocate some RAM. I have 64 gigs of RAM, so I go all out and give it about 12. Um, you can do, um, it recommends four. Four is fine, uh, but I have a lot extra. So that's how much I give it. Um, we're gonna create a virtual hard disk just put just put in create same here VDI just go on next we're gonna go next I like to give it about 40 gigs 40 gigs is fine to create your great 
So once you do that, you're going to start your machine. Okay, this is where the, the, the ISO file that we just downloaded is it you're going to have to look for it. And we're gonna press add. And we're going to look for that. It's it's gonna be on your folders. I actually keep a a, a file where I where I'm going to usually do my I have multiple machines. I usually have multiple machines. I have Kali Linux, Ubuntu minx so I like to save those files on the folders that I keep the virtual machine at but if you're only going to do this for your class you can just grab it off your downloads you're going to go choose and we're going to start and if you've ever installed um, Windows uh, OS it's pretty much similar we just wait till everything gets installed um, it all depends on how fast your computer is um, that's how long it's gonna take I have a pretty decent build I mean I, it's been I built it a year ago but I over overdid it I spent quite a month quite a few dollars on building my stuff Okay, so we just wait and wait until everything gets built. There we go. As you heard, the ding, maybe, I don't know if I have computer sounds being recorded, but. Just exit out of that, exit out of that. There we go. There we go. Install, we're gonna install Ubuntu. English US English US continue normal installation just go download updates go just go to recommended just what it's already been clicked and we're just gonna wait we're gonna erase and install install now just gonna go back I'm sorry we're just gonna continue if you take professor Nguyen's class she does uh she also does uh or at least she did for us or I think she linked us to a uh, to a video so we're gonna name just name just your name Pick username, type in your password. I mean, I recommend require password login, but if you're lazy, you can log in automatically. I mean, it's only, you're the only person that's, that's going to use it, the computer, but as a cybersecurity major, <sighs> this is just what we're taught. Have extra security. Because you never know. Uh, as you can see, it's a small window. Um, um, eventually, after we finish installing, you can um, adjust it just like your Windows. So you can make it bigger, smaller. I mean, obviously, we're going to want to make it bigger. Because um, so we can actually see the, ter the command, the terminal. Because I think the whole class will be terminal, ah, terminal base. I don't know if we're gonna, if there's any GUI. I haven't really, I haven't gotten the book yet. So, and we just wait. I'm gonna pause it here because it's probably gonna take 10, 15 minutes. But if I see something that we need to, I'll just start recording again all right so about fifth uh, I'm sorry about 10 minutes it's gonna ask it to restart just restart it so 
Sorry, I have to press enter as well. I'm going to pause it here so it won't. All right, so once you get to your page where you created your login, just create your login. Type in your password, you put in the password. And bam. Just put ready to go. Alrighty then. So you just make it how you want to make it. So you make a, just keep. All right, I'm going to pause it here, um, but I'm going to show you how to install Visual Studio. I, I can't I can't recall if you could use Visual Studio with Linux or I'm going to search which um, Python language we need or Python ID we can use for with Linux. I haven't really searched research that, but can, uh, I'll research that in a, in a bit and install whatever we need to install. Okay. Yeah, so Visual Studio Code is available for Linux. So actually, before we do that, I recommend you go to Activities down here, type in Terminal, right-click, and Add to Favorites. That way you have easy, easy access to your terminal here. All right, so we go to your Firefox window, type in VS Code, you're gonna go to VS Code website. Go to downloads. You're gonna download the .dev Debian Ubuntu. All right? It'll take you there. Eventually, you save the file. I already saved mine. So after that, we go to files. We go to downloads, and we're gonna right-click on the download. And we're gonna open with software install. We can also do it in a terminal, but not a lot of people know how to use it that well. So this is the GUI way, how we would actually install into in the windows okay I think it was installed let's give it a try there you go Again, I recommend add to favorites because we're going to be using it a lot. Let's open this. Voila. Okay. Read more. No, thank you. Okay. So we're going to install some. There it is. Some Python extensions. Let's actually type in Python. See if we get the better one. Okay. So we're going to install. Install. installing let's see is there an IntelliSense around here IntelliSense do we have an IntelliSense let's see this one does Python with highlighting new fit presenting let's install this one too Worst case scenario, we can always uninstall. Let's see if there's any in IntelliCo, IntelliSense for Python. No, PHP, nope. I 
guess there's no intelligence for Python. Well, there you go. You have Python now. I mean, I'm sorry, you have VS Code, so we can start following along with Professor Nguyen or whatever, if you're someone else that is not in our class. <sighs> there you go. Voila. <laughs>